Hey, what's up everybody? Back with another how-to. Today we're gonna to be doing the wheel bearings on this 2008 G35X all-wheel drive. Now we are gonna be doing both, but this one in particular is absolutely horrible. So this should fall in line with any 03 to 08 G35X all-wheel drive. So let's get into it now. All right, so we're over here at the wheel. Now we're gonna go over a few ways to tell that the car has a bad wheel bearing. Aside from the noise, what you can do is if the wheel is not stiff, when you rock it, see how this is moving? Can you hear it? That's how you know you got a bad wheel bearing. This thing should be stiff as a brick. So that thing is about to fall right off. And look at the rotor. You see that wear on the rotor? That is a huge sign that that wheel bearing is bad. So disregard a lot of the other things that is wrong with this car that you'll probably see. I'm doing a full front end overhaul on this thing. This is one of the many projects this thing needs. But as you can see, we've got strip studs and this is all jacked up, guys. So let's get into it now. All right, so the lug nuts are a 21 mil. Take an impact, slide it in, blast them right off. All right, so the next step here is we're gonna go ahead and get the caliper, the caliper bracket and the whole brakes apart. So we're gonna start with the 14 mil here that's holding the caliper onto the bracket. And as you can see, I have turned the wheel just to get easy access to both the caliper and the caliper bracket bolt with the impact. So we're gonna take a 14 mil on the impact, shoot these right off. All right, so we got a 14 mil here right off and for the top one i just kind of bent the hose out of the way right off all right so it's going to pull these two bolts out and we'll slide the caliper off all right so we have both of those 14 mil caliper bolts out so now we should be able to take this caliper and slip it right off just doing this one-handed might take a little longer here but just wiggling it right off as you can see she's coming free and I'm just going to lift this thing off and we're just going to put it right here to the side for right now. All right. So as you can see, these pads are done for. Let's go ahead and pull these pads out. Surprised they have as much life as they do on them. Not that one though. Woo. Look at that. That's a bad wheel bearing, guys. <laughs> All right. So we got that out. Let's get the bracket off. All right guys, next move here is we wanna get this bracket off. Now what I've done is I've turned the steering wheel all the way to the left to allow us access to these two 22 mil bracket bolts. Now you could get these off with a breaker bar, but if you have an impact, I would suggest using it. It'll be a lot easier than bust the knuckles. So always work smarter, not harder. So let's go ahead, take an impact and get these 22 mils off. So 22 mil, right out. All right, so. Let's get both of these shot out guys so we got that bracket off now if you're having trouble with getting any of these out i had a little trouble with the second one here i just had to heat it up a little bit with a torch and the impact got it right out so we impact both of those 22s right out with the bracket i actually relocated the caliper i have a little s bracket right here so what i did is ran it right to the caliper hole put it right onto this hole and then we got it holding right there so that's safely out of the way not hanging by the brake hose next thing here we're going to go ahead and get this rotor off now this could be a pain if it's rusted onto the hub luckily for us this one is pretty darn free here so i pulled it right off but if you have any trouble with it all you got to do is take a rubber mallet and just you know hit it a few times around the rotor and it should pop it right off so now we're to the hub guys look at that thing my god that thing is horrible guys all right so now we're going to go ahead and approach this axle nut we're going to go ahead and shoot this thing off now i just bent the cotter pin back we should be able to pull the cotter pin out there we go so now what we're going to do is go ahead and heat this axle nut up with a torch just to give it the best possible outcome to come off and then i'm going to go ahead and take an impact and shoot this thing off so All right, so the axle nut is a 32 mil. Got the impact on it, torched it up. Let's go ahead and shoot it off. There it is, right off guys. So now, all we need to do is remove the four bolts holding in the hub from the rear, and then we should be able to knock this thing on out. All right, so the next thing here is we're gonna approach these four 17 mil bolts that hold the hub in so we should be able just to take an impact and shoot them right off so let's go ahead and 
We can get them out. Yep. Now you might need to move your caliper if you got it hanging like I have right now. But let's go ahead and get the rest of these three out, guys. turn the wheel the opposite way now just to get clearance for this bottom last one that we couldn't get from this side. All right, so we have the four 17 mil bolts holding this hub in free, axle nuts free. We're ready to go ahead and knock this thing loose. Now, one thing you wanna be careful of is the ABS sensor here. Um, this vehicle obviously, is, it's got a lot wrong. The bolt's missing and the freaking thing just slide right out. And it's broken. I'm guessing that's why the ABS light's on. But this is typically a 10 mil. You should be able to fire that out with the impact and get the ABS sensor out. Um, now we're going to go ahead and approach getting this thing off. Now, this thing is so bad. Like, it is about to separate. I mean, the wheel was about to fall off of this thing. You can see the ball bearings in there, guys. That thing is, this is definitely the worst one I've ever seen. I've seen some bad ones. So, um, typically, you can hit this with a heavy hammer. Like, I have a four pound mallet right here that i was gonna whacker attempt the whacker off with and that's what we're gonna start with but this might not even have enough leverage on it to get the rest of this rusted uh hub onto the knuckle off so this might not be fun to get off guys but we're gonna go ahead and see if we can start getting this thing some wax and getting her off so all right let's see what we got here guys Check her out. Straight separated it, guys. Honestly, think this is what we needed to do, really, to get this thing off. So let's gonna see if we can work this part of the hub off. This should all be one piece, but <laughs> let's see what we can do. All right, so this thing's endured a lot of suffering. As you can see, this is all damaged down here from uh, it being bad and wearing so bad i've actually got this thing moving so it's actually the the hub itself is still flush but it's it's moving like this so i have the bolt holes off balance basically so i'm gonna see if i can keep working this thing and maybe i can get it to start separating we can pull the remainder of this bearing out Buddy, so we got this thing turning in there. See if we can uh, get this thing whacked off, maybe from right here. I'm gonna have to fix this plate. I mean, it's already destroyed, but we're not helping the situation. But not too much you can do. Look at this thing, guys. OMG. All right, we got pieces of the bearing here. My freaking God. This poor axle's probably even taking a beating from it. Look at this. We're just pulling pieces of the bearing out. All right, guys. So the next move here, we got to clean this up. I mean, this looks like um, I'm going to fix this up, grind it up, clean it. Um, and I mean, look how close this was, guys. All but about to start ripping that ball joint rubber boot, man. Oh, my God. So I'm going to probably take a little grinder to make this look cleaner and then we're going to put a little bit of rust reformer paint on it to make it look better so all right so i got this cleaned up i did it off camera i apologize if something you wanted to see but i just didn't really think it would be that interesting i just took a dremel grinded some of that metal off um taped it off a little bit got some rust reformer in there and i did my best to bend this back in the shape rust reform both sides just to make it clean you know look as best as possible but She's not horrible. 
she ain't good but <laughs> it's about the best we can get with what we got to work with so should be a lot cleaner than it was and we can go ahead and start reassembling this guys all right so unfortunately for me my reassembly wasn't directly after that last shot as i said there was a lot more wrong with this so there's new coilovers in here um new axle when i uh took this hub out that whole axle pulled through the actual opening for the axle in the knuckle which was crazy um but we did get some things fixed um you know got everything back together i believe i have this abs wire ran correctly and the last coilover didn't have the mounts for this and this was just hanging but it looks like this one has them and i got them all routed and i got a bolt for the abs sensor which was missing even though this one looks to be broken but if we do replace it at least the setup will be correct so Aside from that, guys, we're ready for the reassembly, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this hub back in. Now, what I'm going to have to do is slide this dust plate on, and then I'm going to have to get the hub on after. So hopefully yours isn't that chewed up, but this hub does have two notches, which indicate the top, which most hubs do. They have some type of marking that would indicate, you know, the top center of the hub. So let's go ahead and get this thing in here. There we go, we got it somewhat in there, so I'm just gonna put this on here. Start her off here, hold her in place. Try to get a little bit better alignment. Looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is just start feeding the bolts in through the back, and then we're gonna get all of these 17 mils finger tight. All right, so we got each one of these four 17 mils pulled in finger tight. All right, so now what we're gonna do is torque those bolts to spec. Now those 17 mils are 65 foot-pounds. All right, so what we're gonna do here is go in a cross hatch pattern essentially. So I'm gonna do a top one, then do the opposite diagonal bottom one, and then just cross to the other side. So that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna start with the top left corner. I got that one locked in. So now I'm going to go to the bottom right and we're gonna get that one locked in. All right, so we got the wheel turned a bit for the bottom right. So locking this thing in. All right, we got that one locked in. Turn this back around here. As you can see, I have the tie rod loose, so obviously you would just be turning the steering wheel, but I have it loose from the rest of the job. So now we have the top left done, the bottom right. We're gonna go to the top right, get that one locked in. All right, we got that one locked in. And then the last one is just the bottom left. So then we'll have all four of these torqued to 65 foot pounds. Alright guys, all torqued in, on to the next step. Alright, so we got all these 17 mils holding in the hub back in, torque to spec. Now we're going to go ahead and do the axle nut. Now the torque spec for the axle nut is 92 foot-pounds, although I'm just going to take an impact and shoot it on. Just make sure you pull the axle all the way through, so make sure it's tight, the splines are aligned, then you can get the axle nut finger tight as I have it here. I actually ended up using the old axle nut, as I mentioned I did get a new axle, um, because the new one had to crush thread on the end, so I couldn't use it, wouldn't thread all the way on. And this doesn't even have a hole for a cotter pin, so this was from Napa, it was new, it was like 130 bucks, so I mean, <laughs> pretty well it doesn't have a cotter pin hole and that axle nut was wrong, but... I guess that's besides the point, but we're just gonna go ahead and take an impact and shoot that thing back on there tightly. So we got the 32 mil. I got it on a soft setting. There it is, guys. So got that essentially torqued on with the impact, so that's all good. Let's see, you got the axle spinning. No noises, this is moving nice. All right, so all we gotta do now is put this broken ABS sensor in. Hopefully yours isn't. I'm gonna suggest him to replace this as I found one for I think 15 bucks. Now if you remember this was hanging out, missing a bolt, I found a bolt that will work. I got some spares with the right threads, so 
for this, I'm just going to get it finger tight and then give it a nice quick snug. So let's go ahead and get that in there. I'm just lightly tighten it, guys. That's it. Just so I can barely move it. So it's in there good. And we got the ABS sensor actually back attached and routed. All right, so reassembly time for the brakes, guys. We got the hub all in there, so everything's good. Everything's torqued. We got the axle nut and the bolts back in to hold it in. So let's go ahead, take your rotor, slide it right on. Now, I do have new rotors, and this would be a good time to do brakes and rotors since you're already taking it apart in the first place. But I'm going to go ahead, throw this lug nut on here just to hold the rotor on so everything's tight when we're reassembling all the brake pads and the caliper and everything. So finger tight that on. We've got a hard, nice surface there now. Just make sure if you haven't, wipe down the rotor with some brake cleaner. Get it real clean and nice, ready for use. All right, so that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and put the caliper bracket back on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this bracket back on. Now, I have new pads and everything as well, of course. And I went ahead and uh, pressed the hardware in already. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start finger threading these 22 mil bolts back in. Just going to finger tighten them for now, and then we're going to torque them spec. All right, so we have both of these bracket 22s finger tight. So now we're going to go ahead and torque it to spec, and the torque spec is 98 foot pounds. So we're going to torque both of these to 98. Okay, we got that one. Come on, let's get the top one. There it is, guys. 98. So both of these are torqued to spec. Now we can go ahead and move on to reassembling the brakes. All right, just as a reminder, this is not my car. I did not horribly paint this bracket and this caliper green, but I'm hoping one day in the future my customer will let me repaint them correctly, maybe black, something sleek and clean, but that's just for another video. But as I mentioned, we got the new shims in these. All right, so all we gotta do now is put the pads in. So if you are putting new pads in, just make sure you retract your caliper pistons, which I've already done by putting a pad here up against the pistons and then clamp them and then push them back. So they're good, we got that retracted. All we need to do is put in the pads now. All right, so we got new pad here. I got a little bit of um, contact grease here just to make sure the metal on metal has a little bit of sound proofing. So got that one pressed in and all we gotta do is press the back pad on now. All right, next I'm just gonna take a little bit of this grease and put it on the piston where it's gonna be meeting on the pad. And right here on the contact spots of the caliper. All right, so we got that on. Now we gotta do is slide the caliper on. All right, so now we should be able to take our caliper here and slide this thing right over our new pads. There we go, got her in. Now just make sure these have play, our pins here, before you actually put this on. The pins that go right into the bracket, just push them in and out, make sure they're greased up and they have enough play. But Already did that, check that, got the caliper slid on. So all we gotta do now is go ahead and put these caliper bolts back in. So we're gonna go ahead and finger tight these and then we're gonna torque them to spec. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and torque these 14 mil caliper bolts in, they are 20 foot pounds. So we got the torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and get these locked in. One, two, so they're locked in. Perfect, we got play in the caliper. All right, so everything came out really good, guys. All right, so that should wrap up our front hub install on this 08 G35X all-wheel drive. It's pretty much just a rotor and brake job with a couple more tedious steps, really. So I hope this helped. Make sure you guys stay tuned for some more builds and how-tos. And until next time.